Hi, I'm Kelly with CitrusCycles.ca. I'm here at the Transfer Beach Dog Park enjoying the beautiful spring flowers with my recent Mueller 2018 Charger GX Touring. And uh, we might have some visitors since it is a dog park, but these spring flowers are just incredible. And I thought this would be a great place to uh, do the video review of a fantastic bike. So this is the 2018 Charger GX Touring. It's from the German company Ries & Mueller. This is a bike you can ride all day in comfort because of the uh, Brooks saddle, the ergonomic grips, and the dual battery option. You can ride anywhere you want with these grippy Rock Razor tires from Schwalbe and the powerful Bosch CX mid-drive. And you'll know that you can ride it for a really long time because of the high quality components, German engineering, and attention to detail that you would expect from a bike that is custom built for you in Germany. In this video, I'm going to explain more about the features of this bike that allow you to ride all day, anywhere in comfort, and I'll take you on a test ride as well. For details of the uh, rest of the Charger series or the detailed specs on this bike, head over to our website at citruscycles.ca. There you'll find the current pricing, you can order online for delivery anywhere in Canada, and you can find our contact info so you can call or email with questions or set up an appointment to try it here in beautiful Ladysmith or anywhere on Vancouver Island or the Lower Mainland because uh, we can bring the bike to you as part of our Try at Home program. I mentioned that we have video reviews of the rest of the Charger series on our website and a video that explains the Charger series in more detail. The Charger GX, which we're looking at here, is the top of the Charger series from Reese & Mueller. I think of the GX as a grand expedition bike, a bike that will take you anywhere. It is available with the uh, Shimano Dior XT11. It's an 11-speed uh, drivetrain. We have an 11 to 42 teeth uh, cassette, which means you have a great top gear for riding fast down the hills and a very large climbing gear you can see at the back there for getting up the steepest hills. We do have the uh, Shadow Clutch uh, here, or the Shadow Plus Clutch, uh, which allows you to tighten up the chain to avoid uh, chain slap and makes the shifting a little snappier. And we do have the uh, SLX trigger shifters up at the front here, and uh, this one is uh, bi-directional, so you can push or pull it. This one you would push, and we even have a visual indicator up top here of uh, which gear you're in. Now you can get the uh, Charger GX with the uh, roll-off speed hub and a twist shift and I've got a video review of that on our website as well. It is available in two colors. This is the uh, Curry and I love it because uh, it really uh, makes me very visible to traffic but if you prefer to blend in then it is available in a black mat. It's also available in three sizes, with the two larger sizes, uh, this is the medium, having room for the dual battery, like you can see here, or you can opt for a water bottle holder here in place of the uh, second battery. Now I mentioned that this is a very comfortable bike, and there's a number of things that really contribute to making it a, a fantastic ride. So we do have the uh, Brooks saddle that's included with the bike. If you're not familiar with the Brooks saddle, this is actually leather suspended over two seat rails here. And so it's essentially like a hammock for your butt. And uh, it will actually, because it's leather, it will uh, soften a little bit and it will stretch and it'll conform to your anatomy. And uh, it will become one of your favorite saddles, uh, if not the best saddle you've ever ridden because it just becomes so comfortable. Um, we also have the Cane Creek uh, Thudbuster suspension seat post here. Um, it comes with a replaceable elastometer. Now, they don't include the other two elastometers. This is the medium. If you need a lighter one or a heavier one, you can get those and you simply replace that and uh, that uh, will adjust the ride based on your weight. So it uh, does a great job of absorbing the bumps. Um, it is one of the higher end suspension seat posts. It's a, it's a really great design. I've really enjoyed uh, riding with it. Uh, continuing with this idea of how they've made the bike comfortable, we do have a uh, Suntour Ion uh, air fork, and this is uh, actually a, 
an e-bike specific fork, which is uh, fantastic. We've got the uh, through axle here, um, which uh, gives you a lot of uh, stiffness and um, really strengthens everything. You're not going to worry about your uh, wheel falling off, of course. Um, in addition to making your ride more comfortable, the uh, front fork here also helps with uh, traction and grip. And so we do actually have the ability to uh, lock out the fork uh, partially or fully. And on the bottom here, uh, on this side, you can see we've got uh, some rebound adjustments as well. And uh, we've even got uh, reflectors on the front. And it is an air fork, of course, and so the bike does come with a shock pump, which is really cool. And there's a little uh, cover here we pull off or unthread. And using the shock pump, there is a uh, Schrader valve here that you can see. And you would basically adjust the uh, air based on your weight or riding preference. So you can get that uh, cushier or stiffer depending on uh, what your preference is and where you're riding. So all of those things really uh, help to, uh, to make the bike comfortable. I really like having the uh, through axle. It's a very sturdy system. And uh, up the top here we have these fantastic Cork Ergon GP3 uh, ergonomic grips. So not only the ergonomic in terms of the shape. Uh, I really like the, uh, the cork material. It's really comfortable. And then you've got the bar ends as well. Now the great thing about the bar ends is that it allows you to adjust your riding position. So if you r are riding all day, you can shift your uh, riding position uh, by moving your hands and uh, of course you've got some adjustability on the bar ends this here as well. And if you are riding all day, then it's nice to have this uh, front rack here so that uh, you can bring your lunch along, some clothes, or maybe you're going uh, camping or backpacking with your bike. Lots of uh, cool things you can do with it. And of course we also have the uh, rear rack here as well so you could uh, put some uh, pannier bags on there and uh, go for a long ride or maybe you're just heading to work or going to get groceries. You don't have to ride all day with this bike but it's nice knowing that if you want to you certainly can. It's going to be comfortable and with the front rack here uh, you know you'd want to make sure that you limit the weight on the front rack. I think we've got a maximum load here of three kilograms um, so you just want to watch that. That's a great place for a sleeping bag or something like that. Uh, maybe your bread. <laughs> and then we've got the rear rack here. Uh, this uh, rear rack has a 20 kilo maximum load. It's a rack time compatible rack, so you can get rack time accessories that kind of just slide right into here. Uh, you've got a couple of places where they slide in and then it gets uh, mounted by the spring. Uh, one of my favorite features about the recent Mueller racks is they do always include this uh, bungee cord here. So in the past you may have had a rack with uh, a spring-loaded uh, metal clamp that rattles the whole time. Um, these uh, bungee cords are completely silent, which is great and completely adjustable. So if you, uh, you know, don't bring your panniers or, you know, you just need to add more uh, to the top of your rack here, this uh, bungee cord is always here. You can uh, loosen it off and very easily put on uh, whatever it is that you're needing to bring with you. So I love having that uh, rear rack. If you are planning on riding all day, then I do recommend going with the uh, dual battery option. Uh, this uh, really extends your range. So with the dual battery option, you do get two of the Bosch Power Pack 500. This is a 500 watt hour battery, so between the two of them we have a kilowatt hour, which gives you tremendous range. It's really uh, incredible. And uh, there's a couple of advantages to having the dual battery right on the bike. Because of course you could just have a single battery and bring a spare along with you if you really wanted the extended range. Um, if you do that, make sure that you bring the key to remove the depleted battery from your frame. Uh, I used to do that before I had a dual battery bike. I'd bring a spare and then I'd forget to uh, bring the key and I wouldn't be able to remove the depleted battery. So it's uh, nice having them both mounted on the frame. I don't have to worry about it flopping around or getting scratched in a bag on my back rack or something like that or in a backpack. And um, so having them mounted on, on the bike is really handy. The other interesting thing with the dual battery is Bosch actually designed it to draw from each battery uh, alternating back and forth. So it'll draw, you know, five or 10% from one battery, switch to the other one and go back and forth. And 
it's really clever. The reason they do that is to prolong the lifespan of your battery because that reduces the stress on your battery. When your battery's drained continuously, that puts a little bit of stress on the battery. When it gets a chance to rest, that actually prolongs the lifespan of your battery and gives you a slightly improved range. Now you can charge uh, both of the batteries on the bike at the same time. There's a charging flap here, but this isn't the active one. You can see it's covered, saying you, this isn't where you charge. So you just pop over to the other side here, and you can see the charging flap here, and that will allow you to charge both batteries on the uh, frame. Now if you prefer, you can take the key and uh, remove the batteries from the bike and bring them inside and charge them that way. With the Power Pack 500, like I said, this is a, a very long range. Um, in eco mode, which would be the, the lowest level of assistance, um, you could probably get 240 to 300 kilometers uh, with the dual batteries and uh, you know, 120 to 150 kilometers on tour, which is what a lot of people ride on. So it does give you tremendous range and I always recommend that you consider uh, the dual battery option. Keep in mind that if you order the bike as a single battery, you can't convert it later to the dual battery. So talk to us about the possibility of ordering it dual battery capable with only a single battery so that you can add that uh, later on. Now the great thing about the Bosch batteries is this is a, a Bosch battery. It's not a Risa Mueller battery. That means you are relying on Bosch to make sure that this battery is available for you in the future. And uh, you can be assured that it will be. Uh, as an example, this is the 500. Uh, last year, most bikes were coming with the Power Pack 400. Bosch came out with this new battery with 25% higher capacity and they made it backwards compatible. They made it the exact same format. So if you'd purchased a Bosch e-bike a few years ago with a 400 watt hour or even a 300 watt hour and you want the new 500 watt hour, you just buy the 500 and put it on and it'll work. And that's one of the great things about going with the Bosch system is that this is a standard battery that uh, you're going to know is go going to be available and easily replaced. It's not a proprietary battery that uh, is specific to Reese and Mueller. Now this is the Power Pack. Bosch just this year released a new battery called the Power Tube. And it is a battery that goes inside the frame. And so Reese and Mueller will be releasing sometime, hopefully this year, in North America, their new charger and the uh, supercharger, which takes advantage of that in -tube, uh, or, uh, power tube battery to put the batteries into the frame. Um, they are probably going to continue selling the Charger GX here that you see with the traditional battery, uh, partly because this bike, it, by the looks of things will actually be at a lower price than the new ones with the um, power tube. Now, one of the other advantages besides the lower cost of the power packs is they do have the integrated carrying handle here making it really easy to get on and off the bike and transport it for charging. The uh, power tube is a little bit more complicated, doesn't have a carrying handle and you do have to kind of take it out of the frame and then uh, bring it inside but it's nice having both of those options. So as I mentioned, the Charger GX Touring is a bike you can really ride anywhere. We've got these uh, Schwalbe uh, Rock Razor tires here. Um, they do have a high degree of puncture resistance. They're tubeless ready. And um, we've got these nice wide uh, Alex rims, the MD40 rims. And uh, so with that combination of rims and tire, what's really interesting is that the Rock Razor has kind of these smaller knobs in the middle. When you're on uh, pavement, hard packed gravel, you're mostly riding along these uh, smaller knobs here. So the rolling resistance is fairly low, but it still gives you a lot of traction. You'll notice that we've got these uh, larger knobs on the outside, and those come into play when you get into soft uh, or wet, if you get into mud, or when you're cornering. And that's when you really want to be able to bite into the, the trail and grip and, and make sure that you've got that traction. So these Schwalbe tires, the Rock Razor, are really neat uh, because of the way that they work with these um, rims to really give you the best of both worlds. You've got lower rolling resistance for pavement, but you still have the knobs you need for when you get into mud, uh, wet uh, conditions, uh, when you're cornering on slippery roads and that sort of thing. And I've really enjoyed uh, working with the Rock Razor tires. I've got a few bikes with them and uh, I'm really impressed with them. And it is nice that you can uh, set them up as tubeless. 
Uh, so you've also got the uh, fender, so you could ride the bike in uh, all weather. We've got a nice uh, full coverage uh, rear fender here and a front one as well. And I love the fact, you know, that uh, Reese and Miller really fastens them well. So we've got a fastening point up here and then we've got two arms here the fender stays that hold this on. These are uh, the SKS fenders, uh, you know, really strong, very durable. They don't rattle, they're, they're silent, you never hear them, and, uh, you know, really will help to uh, keep you dry. And even uh, on uh, the back here, we've got an attachment point there, and again here and down there, and uh, so really they're very secure and don't rattle, which is uh, nice. Uh, a lot of times that can be a problem on fenders. Again, in this idea of being able to ride anywhere, we've got the Bosch Performance Line CX Mid-Drive. And uh, that's Bosch's top-end uh, drive unit, which gives you the maximum amount of torque. And torque is what you need to climb hills. So a lot of times people ask about, uh, you know, the wattage of the motor, which can be interesting and useful, but uh, more useful is knowing how much torque you have because you want to be able to climb hills and that's the nice thing about Bosch's top and uh, CX drive here is it gives you lots of torque for climbing hills. A mid drive also gives you an advantage when you're climbing hills because the mid drive motor here is turning the chain. The chain then of course is going through your drivetrain on your cassette here. When you change gears that has an impact on the motor. So it's like the transmission in your vehicle. You wouldn't want to have a single speed for your vehicle, uh, and so you don't want a single speed for your motor either. When you change gears on the bike, it's uh, impacting on the motor, which is going to allow you to take advantage of the mechanical uh, leveraging of your gears to help you really climb up any hill that you need to climb up. So the CX uh, gives you, you know, obviously the advantages of higher torque. Um, it also gives you a more responsive ride. The power is immediate. So as soon as you put uh, force on the pedals, you're going to get the assistance that you need. And the Bosch system is really quite clever. It actually senses your torque, that is how hard you're pedaling, your cadence, that is how quickly the uh, pedals are spinning, your legs are moving, and the uh, speed of the bike. We've got a speed sensor back here and a magnet over here and it uh, calculates those things a thousand times per second. I basically explain it like this, it's like it's reading your mind. So it knows exactly what you're doing and provides you with power that matches that. So when we come up to the uh, Intuvia display here, you have, uh, uh, can have the assistance off of course and on the remote over on the left here without removing my hands from the bike I can adjust that. So if I press the plus and move up to Eco, Eco gives me 50% of my input power. And by that I mean because it is sensing how hard I'm pedaling, how fast I'm pedaling and how fast the bike is moving, it's basically like having myself riding with me but only contributing 50%. When I move it up to Tour, then it contributes 120%. And so it's really important that it's so responsive because this is the type of bike you're probably going to ride on some trails. And you don't want to end up in a situation where the bike's giving you more power than you need. You're going up a hill, but at the top of the hill, you need to have a sharp corner. So at the top of the hill, you really want to back off the power. And that's the nice thing with the Bosch system is it's going to be so responsive that as soon as you, you just naturally at the top of the hill, ease off on your pedaling because you don't want to end up over the cliff. You want to go around the corner. Um, the bike's going to respond accordingly. Now, by using the CX, not only are we getting that extra torque, the better response, uh, higher levels of assistance in, the, in the, high, uh, the highest levels of assistance, you actually get more assistance than, say, the performance line or the active line, you also get the new EMTB mode, which is an adaptive mode. And so when I move this up to sport, you'll see it flashes down here, EMTB. What that's telling me is now the bike is going to dynamically adjust from uh, the 120% uh, assistance all the way up to 300% assistance without me having to uh, focus on adjusting the levels. I can just ride and it automatically adjusts that. What I love about that is that you don't have to think, you don't have to worry about it, you just ride your bike and have fun. 
Um, if you get to a hill, you pedal harder, it puts you into that 300% assistance and helps you fly right up the hill. You get to the top of the hill, you start pedaling lighter, it moves you back down, which is important because you don't want to you know, use up all of your battery by riding in turbo all the time. Uh, so it's nice that it automatically does that for you. I like that because in the past I would you know, move it up to turbo, which you still can. You can of course completely manually control it. I'd move up to turbo, I'd forget that I leave it on there, I'd be like, wow, I'm going really fast today, and then like, oh right, I'm in turbo, and I have been for the last 10k, that's going to you know, consume more of my battery. So having that EMTB mode, I really like because it just dynamically adjusts that for you. So I'm going to step you through the Intuvia display here. Before I do that, I should also mention another advantage of a mid-drive is that it does distribute the weight uh, more evenly than if you have a motor in the rear hub. So it's, it's really great having a mid-drive, and the Bosch system is definitely one of the best uh, available. It's very responsive. It also has uh, shift detection. So when you shift gears, it momentarily cuts off the assistance, and that helps prolong the lifespan of your drivetrain because you don't want you know that mashing of gears. You don't want to have full torque on it when you're uh, shifting gears. In fact, it's a really clever system. It also uh, has shift recommendations. So when you're riding, it'll actually flash an arrow up or down if it thinks that you should shift to an easier or harder gear, not only for your benefit, but also to prolong the life of your battery by allowing the motor to operate uh, more efficiently. So this is the Intuvia display. It's removable from the bike. You can also permanently mount it to the bike if you prefer. And when it's uh, removed from the bike, it actually still operates. So you can use the I button here to cycle through the uh, trip computer on the bottom of the screen. And of course, there's also an I button over on the remote here for safety. You don't want to be uh, fiddling with your display when you're riding your bike. So if you want to cycle through the information, just press the I button here on the remote. That's going to step you through the values at the bottom here, such as our odometer. We've got the trip distance. We have... Uh, clock of course, your maximum speed, your average speed, the uh, trip time, which battery is currently in use and the charge status of each battery. Uh, the overall charge status is available up here but this is kind of neat that you can see which battery is which. And uh, one of my favorite features of the Bosch system is we do have a range calculator. So it says uh, based on our current battery charge, the last four or five kilometers that I've ridden and the level of assistance I'm on right now which is Eco, I should be able to do another 262 kilometers. If I change that to tour, it says now you can do 134 kilometers. And it will adjust that for each of the uh, levels of assistance that I'm in. And that will also adjust dynamically as I ride. So if my riding becomes uh, flatter, uh, it'll say, you know what, you can probably go further than that, and it readjusts. If I'm mostly riding on hills and pedaling really hard, um, then it'll, of course, adjust that. So it's, it's really a very, very useful uh, piece of information to have, and I really like having that on there. We can also control our lights uh, from the uh, display here, and you can, uh, if you wish, have your dealer uh, set the lights to be permanently on. One of the things I like about uh, Reesen Mueller using the Intuvia display is because it's removable, you can actually put a Kobe on there, which allows you to use your smartphone to control the bike, and you can control your smartphone from the remote here so that you can make calls, use navigation, uh, check out fitness, um, control your music, all from the uh, buttons here without having to take your hands off your handlebars and fiddle with the phone. Uh, you can check out my video review of the Kobe on our website at citrusycles.ca. Uh, we also have a USB charging port on the Intuvia, which is uh, really nice to have, so you can charge your uh, phone or GPS. And uh, this bike does have walk mode, so way over here, above the plus, here, there's a button, you press and hold that. The display will say um, walk plus, walk assist plus, press and hold the plus button, and that will move the bike along at a walking pace. That's really useful if you are, uh, for example, uh, getting off the ferry. They don't like you riding up the ramp, so it's nice not having to push your bike up. Or if you're in a pedestrian area uh, and you know, you've know you got uh, uh, groceries with you or something like that, it's nice not having to uh, push the whole bike. So safety is important no matter where you ride. And for that reason, we've got these uh, really great uh, Shimano Dior XT hydraulic disc brakes. Of course, with hydraulic brakes, it's not requiring you to have tremendous uh, force with your hands to stop the bike. It's re uh, relying on the hydraulic uh, uh, fluid to uh, stop it and we've got a tool-free adjustability on the uh, length or on the reach of the uh, 
uh, lever here so you can bring it closer to the bars or further away for your comfort. And of course, uh, they are disc brakes, and so that's going to help you stop in uh, all weather. There's, it's nice with the hydraulic disc brakes, you don't have to worry about cable stretching or braking or rusting. Um, they're very, very um, reliable and don't require any adjustments. We also have a really bright Supernova um, light on the front here. It's an E3 e-bike V6S and that is powered off of the main battery. And we also have a rear uh, light as well. And again, both powered off of the main battery, which is great, so you don't have to worry about charging batteries. And they're permanently mounted, so you don't have to remember about uh, remembering to bring them on. Another important safety feature is to keep your bike safe. And uh, for that reason, recent Mueller's included the Avis Bordeaux folding lock. It's really cool because the key is the same key as for removing the batteries from the frame. We've got this handy little uh, case here. I should mention this little thing here uh, can uh, fall out. So uh, often I tell people, you know, just put a, a piece of uh, tape or something in the back there to hold it on. And with the uh, folding lock, these are steel uh, metal bars. Uh, coated in rubber, of course, to protect the frame. And the great thing about a folding lock, as you can see, it's very compact, fits nicely on the bike, it's not in the way of anything. Um, but when you need to wrap it around something, it just opens up and you can see it would make it very easy to simply wrap that around your frame and around a bike rack or anything like that. Um, and because they're steel bars, it's obviously a lot more secure than a cable lock, which can be easily cut. We've got a uh, kickstand here that's uh, part of the uh, attached to the uh, rear of the frame here, so you don't have to worry about your pedals hitting a, the kickstand if you move your bike along. We even have a, a block lock headset here, so that means the uh, handlebars can only turn a certain distance before that headset will stop them, so you're not actually going to have your bars uh, hitting your top tube or anything like that. Well, hopefully I've covered uh, all of the features on the bike. I'm going to take you on a ride test. I'm trying to think of any changes that I would make. Oh, the, the pedals. Right, these are the pedals that come with the bike. Um, pedals are always a difficult thing for a bike manufacturer to, to do. Some, some companies don't even include pedals anymore because they know you're just not going to be happy with them. Um, myself, I always change the pedals to platform pedals with pins. Um, these are okay to get you started, certainly. There's nothing wrong with them, but you may have a uh, personal preference for pedals. Um, the other thing is maybe I'd go with the roll-off version. I love having the roll-off speed hub. There's a lot of advantages to that in terms of maintenance and gear ratio, and you can read about that or hear about that in my uh, video review of the Charger GX roll-off. Uh, if you go with the dual batteries, the only other disadvantage with this bike that I can think of or change that I would make is that there are no uh, water bottle cages when you have the dual batteries. Fortunately, that's easily rectified. So for example, here you can see I've got this really cool um, stuff uh, bag, uh, stuff caddy. Yeah, we've got that on our website. And uh, you can just Velcro it on anywhere you want on the bike. I've put it uh, kind of on the stem here at the front. It makes it easy to get to. This is insulated and I can also use it for things other than a water bottle. There's lots of different options that we have available. So uh, don't let the lack of a water bottle cage <laughs> prevent you from enjoying this bike. So I'm going to take you on a ride test if I have missed uh, any of the features of the bike or if you have any questions or if you'd like to come try it yourself, you can uh, head over to our website at uh, citruscycles.ca where you can find our contact information and I'd be happy to hear from you. So there's a lot to love about the Charger. I think uh, recent Mueller did an excellent job on the geometry and really selecting all the components to bring the bike together in a way that makes it really comfortable. But also, um, I really feel when I'm riding the bike, I feel like I've got really good control. I'm, I'm not sure what the word is that I'm looking for. It's like. It's like a commanding bike. You know, I'm in charge of the bike, in charge of where I want to go, feel, you know, a lot of control. And I think uh, it's a good combination of a, a relatively flat stem, nice wide bars, and that's what you'd get with a mountain bike, right? You, 
you do that on a mountain bike to give you the control that you want uh, when you're in technical situations. So it's nice knowing with this bike, you know, I can really go wherever I want to, get into some really technical riding if I want to, and, you know, have that control that I need. But at the same time, you know, they've done some really great things to make it very comfortable. So we've got these awesome cork ergon grips. I love them. And uh, you got these bar ends, which also, you know, help adjust your riding position, get you a little bit more upright if you want. So it's a really interesting experience because it's a combination of comfort, but also still control. And yeah, I just really like the, the combination. It makes it great. It makes it fun and sporty, but it, uh, you know, it means if you really load up the bike, like this would be a great bike for bike packing. You've got the front rack, you've got the rear rack. You know, you could really load it up and still feel really confident and really in control on the bike. And I love that Suntour uh, Ion Air Fork. It really helps smooth things out. It's nice being an air fork because then if you do load up the bike with a lot of extra weight, you can add some more air. And uh, the bike even comes with a shock pump, which is great. Shifting is really smooth, which is what you'd expect from the uh, Shimano, uh, it's the SLX. Shifters here, we've got 11 speed, which is going to help us climb up any hills we need to. And the uh, Thudbuster seat post is doing a great job. And I'm purposefully trying to go through a lot of uh, potholes and bumps and not slowing down, not standing up uh, over the bumps or the potholes. That front suspension is doing a great job of absorbing the bumps while the Thud Buster is helping keep me uh, comfortable um, and uh, again in control confident. So if you're commuting with this bike, it's nice to be able to maintain a constant speed in line, not to worry too much about getting uh, bucked off by all the holes in the road. <laughs> now maybe your commute is a lot smoother than this which case that's great, but should you decide to go exploring, this bike's going to handle it. I also really like the Brooks saddle. In fact, uh, the Charger GX roll-off, so this is the Charger GX Touring, which is identical to the Charger GX roll-off, except that it uses the Shimano 11 speed instead of the uh, roll-off internally geared hub. Of course, the roll-off is going to have longevity. It's definitely more expensive, but uh, less maintenance and uh, longer lasting. Sometimes people have a hard time getting used to the roll-off. They're so used to a trigger shifter that they don't like that twist shifter and having to stop while they're pedaling. So I can see, you know, for some people going with the uh, GX Touring is a, is a better option because they're going to find it easier to, to ride because they're so used to it. But I do like the uh, the GX roll-off. Like I said, that was my actually my first recent Mueller e-bike was the uh, Charger GX roll-off. I love that bike. Um, and this, you know, obviously it's the same bike, just a different drivetrain, and it reminds me so much of it. Um, that's where I fell in love with the Ergon grips. My favorite grips, this uh, cork just makes it really comfortable. Oh, I'm riding in the winter here. December, it's a beautiful sunny day here in Ladysmith. Vancouver Island, so I've got my gloves on. Um, but it's nice with the, the cork, is really, you know, it, it's, I don't want to say soft, kind of cushy, I'm not sure how to describe it. I really like it. And I also like the bar ends to give you those uh, elevated riding positions. It's where you can see the light is uh, useful to have. I've got a fairly big hill here. I don't expect any problems with the uh, wide gear ratio I've got here. And of course, the uh, Bosch ZX to get me up the hill. Yeah, so the Charger GX roll off. Uh, like I said, my first recent Mueller bike, I love that bike. And uh, that's when I also fell in love with the Brook saddle because it, like this Charger GX Touring, 
comes with the Brook saddle. And wow, what a great saddle. At first, I mean, they, I think they used the pre-aged ones, so you don't have to put as many hundreds of kilometers on it to get it to soften up. This is a brand new bike, and actually it's feeling pretty good right now. After a few hundred kilometers, it just kind of melds to your anatomy and becomes your seat and becomes very comfortable. It's like a hammock on your bike. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I love that, that Brooks. And just uh, coming back to this bike is a real joy. It's a lot of fun. Brings back some good memories of some uh, great trips. And that's the great thing about having the dual batteries is you can ride all day. There's so many great places to ride. You know, I haven't noticed once the uh, front rack hasn't bothered me at all. So that's good. I think you'll find that because the rack moves with the uh, tire, it uh, isn't visually confusing like a rack that's uh, fixed can be. nice the brakes have the um, tool free uh, reach adjustment so I can bring the, the levers further away from the bars or closer. It's nice when you're going back and forth between gloves or sharing a bike with somebody else. Might have heard the uh, tire noise a little bit coming down the uh, hill there. They're not noisy by any means, but uh, you can hear them a little bit once you start getting, you know, 40, 45, 50. And uh, that's partly because we do have some uh, knobs on there rather than an entirely smooth tire. If you wanted to, you could uh, change the tires out to the Supermoto X because we've got this uh, nice wide uh, 40 millimeter rims. So the Charger GT Touring, for example, uses those Supermoto X. For the type of riding I do, I like having these rock razors because I do tend to go exploring on forestry roads and trails, mud, and things like that. I'm just gonna take a break in the video here while we get through the traffic lights, pick it up again on the cycling trail. Yeah, so I do really like these uh, Rock Razor tires. Uh, really, it's only above 40 that you start to hear a little bit of noise from them, but I like having those knobs for when I get into mud, slippery rocks, roots, that sort of thing. Serena Moto X tires are also very good, but um, in deep mud, they just don't have enough knobs. But that's the great thing about this bike is you could use it for everything. So you could actually use it as a mountain bike. It's going to take you on some trails in a little bit. Really the only reason not to use it as a mountain bike is the fenders. If you get into a lot of mud and sticks and stuff like that, you could get the fenders plugged up. But otherwise it's the same frame that uh, Recent Miller uses for their mountain bike. In fact, it's the same suspension fork as well. 
same bars, you know, a lot of same stem. So it's definitely very capable of that. And that is nice being able to use it for everything. So you can use it for touring, you can use it for commuting, you know, running down and getting groceries. If you buy too much, you can put your bread on the front rack there. Just uh, remember it's got a three kilo maximum. And it's still, what, seven pounds or something like that? That's a lot of bread. Or you could use it for uh, bike camping, bike packing, put your uh, sleeping bag or something up there, and then during the week still use it for getting to and from work or picking up groceries. Got it on e-mountain bike mode, which is very responsive. It uh, basically adjusts dynamically between tour, sport, and turbo. So climbing that hill there, I didn't bother changing it to turbo. I just pedaled a little harder and it automatically moved me into turbo and no problem. I sometimes honestly forget about hills when I have an e-bike. Especially something with the Bosch CX, because you just don't notice it. Ah, uh, here's a fun little trail. Again, this is the nice thing about having a bike like this is you could just, you know, you could take these detours and go, hey, you know, I wonder what's down here, what it's like, and uh, let's do some exploring. Look for a little loop. corners and uh, get those side knobs from the tires digging in. And something fun about having a uh, hardtail instead of a full suspension. Take the interesting way back up and back onto the road, but that was a fun little detour. The great thing about the uh, e-bike is you can have as much fun going up the hills as you did coming down. I've <laughs> got some air going uphill on that bump as well. Alright, I'll head back onto the trail here in a moment. The uh, front brake hose making a little bit of bumping noise there. Come move it around. Get the noise. Here, no problem with these tires. It's a very forgiving uh, drivetrain in terms of being able to shift at uh, inopportune times. Still handles it really well. Lots of modulation in those uh, Shimano brakes.
Oh, we'll head over onto the uh, Stocking Creek Trail here. It's some hard pack gravel. Let's see how the tires perform on it. And maybe we'll find a little bit of mud somewhere to play in too. Oh. It's nice being confident in those transition zones where you're, you know, moving in between pavements and potholes and gravel and back and forth. Do some loose, do some wiggling with the front tire here. And it's really just gripping right in, no problem. A quick stop over here. Yeah, no problem with the stopping either. No problem with the downshifts that I forgot to prepare for. Again, it's a nice, very smooth drivetrain. It's nice being able to adjust your body position and uh, you know, it's interesting because some people like swept back cruiser style bars. And part of that is that if you, you know, kind of take your arms so you're giving a handshake, that's kind of how you're riding on a cruiser style bike or with these bar ends. Whereas if you put your arms out in front of you, flat, that's, you know, mountain bike position. And some people find that when they rotate their arms as if they're shaking hands, it loosens up the shoulders, puts less strain there. The challenge with that, of course, is you do lose a little bit of control over the bike. I definitely wouldn't want a mountain bike with swept back handlebars. So it's nice having the uh, bar ends here because that really gives you that opportunity to ride in that position, you know, when you don't need to have that uh, technical control over the brake bike and you're not having to break or shift right away. But it's nice to be able to switch back to these mountain bike style bars. For when you do need that control. I am surprised at how smooth the ride is. You know, I'm used to riding a D-Lite uh, GX Roll-Off or GT New Vinci where you've got the, the recent Miller control technology with the full suspension. But uh, even without that on the Charger with the Thud Buster and its air fork, it really is quite smooth. You've got the air pressure fairly low on the tires. Could go two of us, that would let you get it even lower. Dropped into a parallel trail here just to give the bikes a try on uh, boots and rocks and a little bit of muck, not a whole lot. It's been fairly dry this week, which is surprising for winter. It's gonna rain soon, so maybe I'll have to head back, give it a try in some rain. Got a little bit of wet mud on the corners here. And again, those side knobs are doing a great job of digging in on that. This is a really fun bike for trails like this. Very comfortable with the Thud Buster and the Brook saddle. Those tires. Yeah. You know, it's, uh, saves you about, oh, maybe about $1,300 going with the hardtail as opposed to the D-Lite, which is full suspension. And, you know, depending on your what you're riding and how much you want to invest in your bike, it might be completely worth it. On the other hand, if you're looking to save a few bucks and just kind of maybe simplify things, you don't have the uh, rear shock, have to worry about uh, servicing or, you know, it also helps keep the weight down. You're still going to have a 
fairly comfortable ride. Of course, uh, once you come and try the D-Lite, well, it is a great experience. I do so as a charger, but uh, it's hard. I don't think I would trade my D-Lite for the charger at this point. It is a great bike, though. All right, we'll head back up that uh, steep hill. It's steepest right at the end. I often have a hard time getting the uh, GPS and the camera to work because of the trees here. So it may not show you the grade or it may be uh, wildly incorrect. But it is quite steep. So I'll boost that up to turbo. I wouldn't have to again. If I just pedal hard, the e-mountain bike mode is automatically going to uh, put it up there for me. But if I don't feel like pedaling hard, <laughs> then I can put it in the uh, turbo and I don't have to worry about it. So there we go. I'm in my easiest gear. Yeah, not a problem at all. Lots of gear ratio to climb right up there. So it's not a problem. You know, with the 11 speeds, even though it is a one by system, in other words, there's just one uh, chain ring up front. I do find that you have more than enough gears, both to go fast and to climb. And it's so much simpler with a single chain ring up front, both in terms of a riding perspective, not having to figure out which gear combination to use. And in a technical sense too, you're not uh, worried about cross-chaining or chain dropping or that derailleur going out of whack or needing replaced and those kinds of things. So yeah, I really do like having the one by. It's interesting coming back, doubling back on this trail, I can see my tire tread there. And you can see, you know, when I get into the gravel, when I get into the mud, the width, it's quite a wide tread that I'm getting there. And you can see the pattern from the uh, knobs. Now, of course, you could change out the tires. Something even knobbier if you wanted to. I find this is a really good compromise because it does allow, allow you to do stuff like this. Um, but at the same time, it's not a problem in terms of an increased rolling resistance or noise or even wear when you're on pavement. So if you're kind of doing a mix of everything, these are great tires to use. Oh, that was fun. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, you could put some knobby nicks or something like that on, and that would work as well. I'm still finding it a comfortable riding position. It is a little bit more forward, but I'm not hunched over. Again, with the bar ends, I can uh, adjust my riding position as I need to. And I keep forgetting about that rack. I guess, you know, I'm usually looking at where I'm going and not down at my front wheel. So it's definitely uh, not an issue. I know sometimes people are concerned about you know, the rack being difficult in terms of confusing their eye. I don't think you'll find that the case. And yeah, it's nice to have that little bit of extra space.
the light is mounted out on the uh, rack there. And so if you put something on the rack, it's not going to block the light. It's all the attention to detail that uh, Reese and Mueller does a really good job of paying attention to. Back on the pavement, performing equally as well. Of course, this is uh, available in black as well as the uh, curry yellow here that I'm riding right now. It's available to you or not. But uh, I really like the, the curry yellow, it's very unique. It looks uh, different in person than probably it does in the video or the website. I definitely feel more visible in traffic, which is nice. Now, there's some people that prefer, uh, because like I said, this bike is available with the roll-off, and uh, the Charger GT New Vinci is available with the carbon belt and the New Vinci system, uh, which I really like. It's great having that CVT. It doesn't have as wide of a gear ratio as uh, the Touring does, the GX Touring at least, with this 11-speed uh, cassette. Um, and there's some people that feel that, you know, a chain and cassette is the most efficient uh, drivetrain and that they feel they more have a direct relationship with the bike, so to speak. Yeah, I can understand that, you know, as I'm riding this, I do feel that there's just this, um, you know, when I really stomp on the pedals, I I'm just feeling that connection with my drivetrain. Um, whereas, say, with the uh, New Vinci and the belt, it's uh, very fluid, uh, which is a great experience as well, but it's quite different. Definitely very smooth shifting. No complaints at all about that. Well, I'm kind of sad to be heading back because I'm having so much fun with this bike. I remember why I loved it so much when I first got the uh, Charger GX roll-off. It's just a lot of fun, very enjoyable to ride. It'll make a great uh, touring bike. You know, you can really ride this all day wherever you want to go. It's, uh, if it's your commuter bike, it's something to look forward to at the end of your days, your ride home. Okay, back on now that we're through the traffic lights. No point in sitting and watching the red light. I would change based 
just on this short ride test, but also my experience with the GX uh, roll-off. And I think if you go back and you look at my um, long-term review of the Charger GX roll-off, really the only thing that I said there was uh, I would I would like to have full suspension. <laughs> and uh, so I did. I ended up with the D-Lite GX roll-off. And definitely it's great, but uh, it's not completely necessary. I'm... You know, I loved moving up to the uh, D-Lite with the control technology. But for me, it's worth it. Definitely worth it. No doubt at all. Um, but if you're wanting to save a little bit of money, there's nothing wrong with this. This is great. Um, I need to add a mirror, but of course, no bikes come with mirrors. And it's something I always add to a bike. And I would change out the pedals. Um, these are actually pretty close to what I would want, but I like wider platform style pedals and that's no fault of recent Mueller's they don't build bikes based on my pedal preferences in fact a lot of bikes don't even come with pedals anymore simply because uh, the manufacturer knows it's such a personal choice as to what you're going to want to do other than that you know I think they really everything comes together perfectly the riding position the bars the grips Great suspension for perfect tires for this type of bike, the style of bike. The uh, drivetrain choice is really great, nice and smooth. So all in all, fantastic bike. If you have any questions about it, uh, you want to come try it yourself, if you'd like to order one and have us ship it to you, you can do all of that on our website at citruscycles.ca.